Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. This week on Museum at Home, we're revisiting a temporary exhibit called Art of Still. Inspired by a collection of 39 glass plate negatives, the gallery exhibit showcased 30 of the resulting photographic images, but today we're going to show you all of them. The glass negatives came into the museum almost by accident. They were part of a collection of photography developing equipment that was collected to illustrate a certain period of photographic history. The images themselves didn't have a local connection, so the negatives were viewed only as samples of the glass plate technology. However, on closer examination of the images on the negatives, a process made much easier with a scanner and digital technology, we found a beautiful set of black and white images. The museum donor had purchased the negatives at a local auction as part of a package of photographic equipment. There's no provenance or historical information, so who's the photographer? That's a bit of a mystery. Most of the negatives were stored in paper envelopes, and those envelopes had notes written on them. Practical and technical information, but they also give us a glimpse of our mystery photographer. From those envelope notes, we've learned that the images cover a time span from 1917 to 1929. And, judging only from this set of negatives, we see that the photographs were done in small spurts, with the majority of the pictures being taken in the spring and summer of 1919, 1922, and 1923. The negatives were sold at auction here in Canada, but the labeled landscapes in the collection all seem to be located in the vicinity of Malvern in England. From that, we assume that all the images were taken in England, and that possibly the photographer is English. And as the negatives eventually made their way to Canada, it's also possible that the photographer immigrated to Canada. Which are good hypotheses, but really, we just don't know. Most negatives have a title and a date, as well as notation for making prints from the negatives. This includes type of photographic paper, exposure time, and type of light. When using natural light, there are notes like bright sun August, as opposed to gas light. The notes also tell us that some photographs were sold or exhibited, and a number appear to have been copied for friends and family. When we exhibited these images at the museum, we made nice groupings of still lifes and landscapes so they'd make an attractive arrangement on the walls. But here, we're going to look at them chronologically. Thus we start with the earliest dated photo in the collection. Not all the images are dated. Titled, River Scene Near Burford, it was taken in September 1917. The labeling for this envelope is partially torn, but from what we can piece together, this is the River Leach, taken October 15, 1917. This image isn't labeled, but I've placed it here with the other two 1917 landscapes. Gooseberries was taken June 25, 1918. It's the only image we have from that year. And now we leap forward another year to April 22nd, 1919. This beautiful image of Narcissus pheasant's eye has a few blemishes, so we created a photoshopped version to smarten it up a little. Wood sorrel amongst rocks is one of my favorites. Taken May 10th, 1919, it's an interesting cross between still life and landscape. May 15th, 1919, we have this sweet image of white bluebells. A print of this was sold to GOP. I don't really know what's meant by GOP, although it typically abbreviates Grand Old Party. It could be the initials of a person or a gallery. Bowl of White Lilac from May 22, 1919 has some speckling, likely due to age. Blackberry Blossom from June 16, 1919 was reproduced as a gift for several people in 1922. White Foxgloves, from June 20, 1919, won a medal from the MCC in October 1923. We think that MCC stands for Malvern Camera Club. This photo of irises and the one following are undated. I've placed them here due to their similarity with White Foxglove. It's interesting to note with these studio floral pieces that the light always comes from the right. That's probably where the window was located. And then we skip a year with nothing from 1920. This image and the next are both from April 1921. They're labeled Rose Garth Storage, Views from Top of Field. The photographer gave away or sold several copies of Iceland Poppies from June 4, 1922. Again, we can see the light coming in from the right. 
This delightful landscape called Oxeye Daisies in Field is from June 16, 1922. Cherries, taken on July 4, 1922, was exhibited the following year in both Malvern and Arnside, a village in Cumbria. Plums, from August 10, 1922, has a similar composition to cherries. Copies were made for friends and or relatives, as well as being sold to GOP. Simply entitled Nuts, this image of a hazelnut branch was taken August 16, 1922. The Alberni Valley Museum reproduced a colorized version of nuts one year for a Christmas card. The curving branch forms, the contrast of shadow and sunlight. For me, this is the best landscape in this collection. Sunlight on Tree Trunks, Hales End, December 18, 1922. Now in April 1923, we have Plum Blossom in Ginger Jar. Again, in this studio shot, the light comes in from the right. Now we have four landscapes, all taken May 9, 1923, at Vines End Farm. This one is called Landscape with Daisies. And this one, Landscape, Vines End Farm. And the final Vines End photo is called Lane to Vines End, Mr. Wentz Cottage. And then we come back to still lifes. These next three images are all labeled Moonlight Roses, July 19, 1922. Another note on the Moonlight Roses envelope reads, Eight Proposed Club Folio Negatives. Perhaps this refers to the Malvern Camera Club, where white foxgloves would win a medal later in 1923. And then we have the final two still lifes. Apple Blossom, with its artfully scattered petals from May 20, 1924, and the very similar Pear Blossom, which is undated. There are no images from 1925, 26, or 27. And then, in August 1928, a single image, Stuart in Wood. Is it a friend, a brother, a son? Maybe one day we'll find out. And then, to finish up, we have an interesting little series from January and February of 1929. They're all taken at a place called Brandlehough. That missing corner? Glass negatives are fragile, and this one came to us broken with the piece missing. This one's called Deep Cove, looking down the road from Brandlehough. And here we have Deep Cove on the road near Stacy's, snowstorm, January 26, 1929. Among the Firs, Snowy Day, Brandle Howe, January 30th, 1929. This one's called View from Dining Room, Brandle Howe, January 1929. And this very similar image is called View from Brandle Howe, Cloud Effect. Our final image is Deep Cove, View from Brandle Howe, February 14th, 1929. That's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching the Alberni Valley Museum's Museum at Home. In the craft pickup this week, you'll find a photo colorizing project based on these images.